There's been a whole heap of interest in the new Alvi reels in the spinning baitcaster and the overhead reel. Now I was given the Alvi Orbiter baitcaster reel six months ago to take it through its paces, to do what I wanted to do with it and to flog it basically and to see what it's like. And this is my review on the Alvi Orbiter baitcasting reel. Now Alvi is synonymous with sidecast reels and beach fishing and my dad would only ever buy Alvi reels so I learned how to fish on an Alvi but we'd use it for estuary fishing, boat fishing as well as beach fishing and look you've probably seen them before but they're the reel you turn to the side, you cast your line out, click it back in, dunk it in the water, get home, hose it off, throw it in the sand, whatever, doesn't matter. Look the old Alvi reels that we had as kids still works just as well today. Look, they're fantastic, but that's the problem what Alvi had. You only buy an Alvi once and you have it for your whole life. So Alvi really struggled in the market that where people were starting to buy spin reels and baitcast reels as well, so they branched down. So check out some of these clips of me playing around with it. And if you hang around to the end, I'll show you exactly how to tune all those dials to give you trouble free fishing. Today I'm out having a bit of a barra fish up in North Queensland with the, the what is still fairly new, although it's been out for a little bit now, the Alvi Orbiter Baitcaster. I've been flogging this thing for about uh, six months. You can see it's got plenty of scratches and dents and, well no dents, but plenty of scratches and stuff all over where it's been bouncing around the boat. Uh, caught quite a few fish on it. And I have to say, I absolutely love this reel. That was about a metre worth of queen fish. And I'll show you this creek, the tiniest little creek. The Alvi reel is unbelievable. But I should have got the Alvi rod to go with it. You can't muscle metre queen fish out of little tiny creeks with a high modulus rod. You want to get something with a bit of guts behind it. So that is a significantly shortened you can see, not a cheap rod by any stretch of the imagination, but you've got to experience like a queen fish around that size, and that fish was every bit of a metre long, in really narrow creeks where you've got mangrove roots just everywhere, and you've just got to muscle them up, and I'm really hard on, on the gear.
just kind of a bar. It's, uh, just caught myself a barracuda. I don't like being handled too much, so I'm going to slip them straight back in the water pretty quickly. But uh, all the things on these things, they're insane. I'll get them straight back in the water. Uh, my favourite table fish, the grunter, so this guy's in a little bit of trouble. After six months of using this thing, uh, what I love about it is the reel is fantastic. The handle feels really good. You can it's just got a really nice feel to that handle. It hasn't bent, and that's pretty significant because there's been a lot of reels I've had over the years where the handle's just bent a little bit because I'm bouncing th that thing around the bottom of the boat all the time. And when you wind and you've got a little slight bend in the handle, it feels very uncomfortable, but these have been great. Probably one of the things I do like about it even more than the handle is once that I set the preload on the spool itself, I don't have to touch it again unless I change the weight of the lure. But the rest of the reel, the the bearings um, feel really smooth. They haven't got noisy on me at all. And I've thrown this thing, I've probably done a hundred hours or, or more of fishing with this thing and it's still really, really smooth. I haven't oiled them up or anything. Um, the magnets on them are really good. They seem to be very effective. If I do turn around and I cast into the wind, so change direction of my cast, I just click that magnet maybe one click and it fixes it up. I won't get any backlash. If I do feel any backlash on my thumb, I'll just smooth that magnet one or two clicks and it's fantastic. Uh, the other thing, I've got to give it 10 out of 10 for value or money, for value for money. It's better than the $400, $500 bait casters I got. And I can say that with my hand on my heart, it's a beautiful reel. The other thing you could see when I was muscling that queenfish is that it's got a really effective drag on it. I did lock down on it when it ran, ran me around those mangrove roots and I had to pull it out through the other side. The rod snapped, you know, so be it. That's, that's fishing. But the drag system is so smooth, it's lovely. And what I don't like about the reel, I really can't tell you. There's, um, look, there's really nothing negative I've got to say about it. As you can see, there's a few chips and stuff on it, but it bounces around the bottom of my boat all the time. You know, I I cross little bays to get some of the, into some of the creeks that I go to, and I'm only a little flat bottom, bottom punt, and these things bounce around all over the place. I don't have them in a rod holder or anything, so all my reels look the same. Um, so that's not really a fault of the reel. I really haven't got anything negative to say about it. It is a really, really nice reel. Very big fish. I was hoping to get some real big ones, but we'll keep fishing away and see how we go. Smash that vibe on the drop, I think. In the lips, I'll lift him up. Yeah, here we go. So as promised, we're going to talk about how to use the adjustments on these bait casters. The most important thing about using a bait caster is setting the adjustments. And you've got two. You've got a magnetic brake, and on the side of the LV orbiter, that's a little click dial. You can see there's a minimum and a maximum setting. It says minimum just there and maximum on this side. On the other side of the reel, on the handle side, you have a dial, and that's the preload on the spool. Okay, so. You set the dial, the preload on the spool, according to the weight of the lure, and you set the magnets according to the conditions you're casting in. So I'll explain that as I do both of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the preload on the spool, and you set that according to the weight of the lure. So this lure I've got on here is reasonably heavy, and you can see if I open up the, the spool, into the casting position the lure falls slowly to the ground and i don't have any line re spooling off the reel as it's as it hits the ground if i loosen that right up and i drop it down now it'll fall way too quick and i've got all this loose line that's come off the spool and that's just going to give me problems so i'm gonna i'll readjust it just so i've got a nice slow fall that's a little bit too quick that's not falling at all. All right, let's check that one out. Falls to the ground, no backlash, the line stops. 
the other setting is this magnet on the side and what that is is your brake because when you throw a lure in the air it slows down as it flies through the air and before it hits the water it slowed down significantly more than what it was when you first started the cast and that's where the brakes come in on the alvi orbiter there's a magnetic brake system and you can see here i've taken the reel apart and i'm turning that dial and you can see those magnets get closer to the spool and they get further away from the spool so it's creating a bit of a force that works as a brake to slow that reel down to stop it spinning so fast as the lure flies through the air and you have to adjust that according to the conditions too as well as your casting ability if i'm casting into the wind i need to slow that lure down more because the wind's going to slow the lure down significantly as i make the cast but if i'm casting with the wind i can dial it right off because the wind's going to push the lure along another thing if you're a beginner dial it right up to 10 at first just to get a feel for it because if you dial it up to 10 it's going to slow down so that you're not going to get any backlash at all so let's make a couple of casts with the preload set to the weight of the lure and the dial on 10 and let's let's watch the spool as the lure lands so we're going to make a cast and with no finger on that at all to stop it the lure lands and we've got no backlash at all so i'm going to dial that i dial it right down to minimum and there's going to be line coming off and my thumb's going to slow it down because i don't want to end up with a big bird's nest but i want to allow enough to, to loop off just to show you how it actually works make this cast now and you can see my my thumb slowing it down but there's a heap of line coming off that as i um cast if my thumb wasn't slowing it down it would have ended up um, with a big mess when you've been throwing these things for years you can your thumb can control everything for you. You don't have to um, use the dial at all. But if I put that dial to halfway, maximum being there, minimum being there, I'm going to see if I get any loose bits of line coming off that at all. And I don't. And as it lands, I've still got to stop it because it's not, the brake isn't at 100%. But that's going to work for me. I can cast a long way. I'm not getting any little backlashes of line coming off. So let me back it off two clicks and I'll see I'm starting to get a, I can feel a little bit of loose line on my thumb when I do that. So for me that's not too bad but the right way to do it is put another click in it and see if I get any loose bits of line and I'm not. I'm not getting any loose bits of line so that for these conditions and how I'm casting and with the wind, with the weight of the lure, with everything is completely set. I can cast this a long way and I just felt a little a couple of loose bits of line come up under my finger there. So I'm going to drop that back another click. But you, that's all you do. You just keep adjusting it so that it's comfortable for you. And like I said, if you're a beginner and you're not used to running your thumb on the spool then don't worry about it dial it up even more and as you get better and that's absolutely perfect i can cast that lure a long way i'm getting no backlashes at all and easy enough i can see if i can catch a barra